So yeah, so we come all the way from, from Kimberley, the Groot Gat, okay, and there's a lot of other potholes, and so there's a bunch of holes in Kimberley now, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know when last you've driven through. So it's quite, as you come into Gauteng, there's none of that, and it's quite, quite interesting, it's, it's amazing. But um, yeah, so we pastor a church there in, in Kimberley, for, we've been doing that for about five years now, um, Anya and myself, and then we've got a an awesome team of, of people as well there, and um, it's been an interesting it's been an interesting couple of years in particular the last two three years right it's been a bit odd come on Herod knows been like like what happened you know and and now all of a sudden things are, are open and uh, there's something new in the spirit there's just something new that's happening. And, uh, and uh, I, I really feel that's partly why I'm here tonight, why we're coming together. We spoke about, like, the rivers meeting, but uh, I believe that's partly why we're here. And, uh, and I really pray that your hearts are, are sensitive, open to what the Lord is doing. And that's what I want to speak about tonight, and really um, just what I've seen, what I've experienced, and what I believe God is doing um, that, that it will just, that you'll see that God is active and He's up to something in this time and you believe it. So anyways, um, they say that behind every successful man, there is a woman rolling her eyes. So that would be Anya, my wife, All right? And uh, so we've got three kids, Lily, Emma, and Josh. And so they homeschool so that they can travel with mom and dad when they go places and go preach out. So yeah, Daniel and Bernadine, thanks for the, the, the opportunity, the privilege to, to be here. Okay, let's get into it. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it is alive, that it's powerful, that it will speak to, speak to us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. I like to be, when I'm a minister, try to be as honest, like vulnerable, truthful, uh, and, uh, and I believe that everybody can, can relate to it. And um, so I'm just going to share a lot, like of in, in particular the last five years, what's been happening in my heart, and uh, what I believe God is doing today. Um, amongst it might be some, uh, some things that, you know, like questions. I don't know how many people have questions and ask, I don't know why and when and how, things like that, that I'd like to maybe get into and, and, and give some answers that I've, that I've had. But um, let, let's open this way. How many guys believe that all things are possible? You'd believe. You know, it's great to say, it's great to say that until you need something impossible to happen, right? It's great to say the amen on the, on the Sunday, but when the time comes where you need to place a demand and it's like, whoa, do I really believe that? You know, it's like uh, Auntie Joyce Maya Shimo said, before you, before you phone, go to the throne, you know, like, approach approach God, approach His presence. But I wonder, yeah, that, that should be our first option. But I was just thinking about the things that we say, the things that we say we believe. And I was just thinking, do you know, like, your faith rests on miracles, a miracle, sign, signs and wonders. I mean, you're, you believe that Christ was born of a virgin. Okay, that's absurd. Okay, you believe that he was crucified and he was raised from the dead and he sealed an inheritance for you. He poured out his spirit and he's now right on the right hand of the, you know, of the throne, right? You believe that? Okay, so what is the, the, the breakthrough that you're struggling to believe for? Okay, so, so we have to... I think we, we need to be uh, a church of, of power, a church that, 
that believes. You know, like the moment that, you know, someone's got a headache, we should be able to say, no, but I, I believe. You know, miracles happen. Let me, let me lay hands on that, you know. Now, what I believe God is doing, particularly in this time, so I'm going somewhere. Um, I remember five years ago, beginning to pastor a church. I don't know if you guys can relate to this at all. And I know this is, there's not a bunch of pastors in here. I know of two. Is there any other pastors in here? Um, again, great. I remember five years ago, something changed in my heart, and I, like, I just backed off from a couple of things. I backed off from in, in public, not, not in my, like I still laid hands on the sick, I still prophesied over people, but in a public p- platform, I just stopped, and I, I, I just felt I need to stop. Now, this is me, this is not, this is just like what Paul said, this is, was my conviction, right? And, uh, and then uh, when I called people up for ministry, I put the mic down. And I just, you know, just like this. You know, I stopped the whole thing. And I was, Lord, what are you doing? And, uh, you know, there's a big difference between religion and revival. I think they're opposites. You know, sometimes religion and revival, just on the surface, can look the same. <laughs> you can be laying hands on the sick. And the sick will be really getting healed. When religion, you're laying hands on the sick and you're fabricating miracles. Okay, listen. There has to be something happening. There has to be power. Okay? And I just felt like, whoa, whoa, let's just stop this. What's going on here? And it wasn't long after that where, like, this whole COVID thing hit and everything closed. And it was almost like, look, I'm not trying to say that there was anything uh, good about that time, like it was terrible, but something good, it was like just everybody shush, you know, every church, every pastor, every, every, everyone on a public platform, keep quiet, and there were so many prophetic words going around about what's going to happen, and everyone had to eventually just shush, <laughs> and I thought, wow, what an incredible time, because when it opened, we get to rediscover things. It's like everything is, is, is being revealed in a new and a fresh way. And I'm like, okay, Lord, so what are you doing? And what I believe that God is doing and what I really trust that tonight will really break open is that this, I mean, this church is called Oasis Revival, is that you'll discover that revival is not just good church meetings. <laughs> Come on. Revival is not just good church meetings. I'm telling you, Daniel touched on it. Revival looks like happy homes. Come on. All right. Revival, I'm telling you, I think we've been just talking about this a lot, but um, sometimes revival looks like a dad playing at home with the kids. Right? Revival looks like someone that is that is a widow that finds purpose, again, reason to live, you know? That's revival. It's part of revival. It includes good meetings. Hallelujah. All right? But um, and that's why I, I said I think my perspective and my understanding what revival was at a time, and yet we experienced, oh, we can tell you stories of what we've seen and experienced, but I remember... We had church meetings till late, late, late at night, like seven days a week, often, right? And we came home to, we had no, I had no relationship with my wife at that time, because we were just church, 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 church. And it's like, wait, something's got to change. And I believe God is, is, is like channeling this, this revival to home, to your business, to, to what's happening in, in, your, in your own sphere of influence. Amen? So, um, I don't know how we're going to get to, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. So, if you go, if you just read Mark, let's go to Mark chapter 16, one past chapter 15. You were almost in the spirit. No, I'm joking. No, no. Mark 16. Let's just read that and uh, just quickly go over that. Is this all right? Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to speak about 
the honest things. And what has really been a breakthrough in my life, that I believe that can change your life. Amen. I remember, I remember, uh, who's that guy? I can't remember what his name is. He said, God didn't, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. He didn't come to make bad people good. Come on. He didn't come to make you a good person with good morals and good values. He came to make you live. He came to bring life and life more abundantly. I think too many people just exist. And God wants you to live. I think revival is the catalyst for that. It brings, brings you to a place of, okay, now, the, now when I go to work, it makes sense why I, I go to work. It makes sense why I do what I do. God's hand is on my life to do it, man. Amen? So Mark 16, uh, this one you've heard over and over and over. Jesus is raised from the dead. And uh, verse 15 he says, go into all the world and preach, publish openly the good news to every creature, the whole human race. Okay, let's quickly go page one, uh, not page, one verse back, and we just read the opening sentence. It says, afterward, he appeared to the 11 apostles. Okay, and let's go back to 15. He said to them, who? The 11 apostles, go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news. He who believes. Now tonight, when I asked who believes, everybody raised their hands. And uh, he who believes and is baptized, okay, he will be saved. Verse 17, these signs will accompany those who believe. The, the, the commission was to the apostles to go and preach. But those who believed the message, these signs will accompany them. And so, so we had it in, in my life. I always thought, wait, I need, I need to go. And there are people that will go. But the point of the gospel is to get people to believe so that that can transform their own community and where you are in your own sphere of influence. The authority is on your life, is on you, is on the believer to, to see signs and wonders, to lay hands on the sick. Amen? It's on you. It's, it's not just on the goers. I think this thing, um, this is what God is, is trying to bring to the church, is that the people who hear... If this message is not bringing that, that transformation in your life, close the church. Come on, this, it's not a place to come and watch one man perform and do everything. It's, it's literally that the message is sent to bring a transformation to your life, to bring power to your life. And when I saw that, I, I realized, goodness, um, my job is to bring that transformation. You, you're seeing it to bring that transformation to you, to your life. I want that. Bill Johnson said it's impossible for a Christian to not have an appetite for the impossible. Something inside of you wants to see. Something inside of you wants to see things happen. Something inside of you says there's more. Amen? Something in you agrees and says, man, I want more. And so I backed off from all of that stuff because... It just felt like a big show. This is, my, this is my experience. It's not a reflection on the whole church. Okay? This is my experience. And, um, oh, man, we had such a great time in the prayer meeting. I, I, we prayed in the back there. And uh, they, I didn't tell you guys, but I've got a vision written uh, just in my life about like my experience about what God wants to do. And for years in our church, I prophesied that about this revival. And I said, if you're sensitive, you can feel it's like a weight hanging and it just needs to break. And it's like this, this, this cloud in the end, like word for word what they were saying in the back. Just so you know, they, they, they hear God, right? They hear. 
Okay? Now you've got a potent church here. There's a potent team. You know, we honor that. And uh, I kept on saying, Lord, this thing's got to break. You know, you, you saw in Acts chapter 19 where, the, where those Jewish guys, those Jewish exorcists, were laying hands and trying to cast out devils in the name of Jesus, whom, whom Paul preaches. Yeah, the sons of Sceva, right? And they, there was no power. I said, Lord, we need power. Something's got to break. Something's got to break. And I'm saying, I'm prophesying to the church that this thing is going to break. And God began to tell me, no, that doesn't have to break. You have to break. I have to break. The breakthrough has to come from, from within me. And since I understood that, it's like, wow, here comes, here comes a big thing. Amen? Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Let's go to, to um, yeah, let's go to John. And uh, John 4. I just want everyone to be honest. How many guys experienced in the last while, like, just pressure? Pressure, how do we explain? Everybody experiences pressure. But just like pressure on your faith, pressure on your belief. Come on, let's just be honest. How many experiences pressure? You know, like it's just, uh, like, it, yeah, I don't know. How to, uh. I heard someone else, like, explain it. It's like almost when you, you blow up a balloon and, like, you go, Wee! you know, that, that kind of pressure. It's like, uh. And, uh, I was like, Lord, this pressure, just take it away. Take it away. I don't want it. But, but like he spoke to me and he said, no, wait, this pressure is, is there for you. In this, in the, I'm not trying to sermonize your difficulties, right? I'm not trying to give you a reason to have the pressure. But he said, Bruce, that pressure is there for you to break through. That pressure is for you to push back. If I don't have that pressure, I'm not going to push back. And the, and the church needs to, to begin to answer and stop questioning and begin to push back with answers and not just accepting every question get, that gets thrown your way because something's got to break from the inside. I love the, the analogy of, the, of that egg. They say that uh, if a egg breaks, it can be a good thing. I did this at a rehab the other day, and I asked them, guys, if an egg breaks from the outside in, is it good? They say it depends. They say because if, if you're making bacon and eggs, it's, it's a good thing. So I said, no, man, if there's a chicken on the inside, man, you know. <laughs> so, so, so this, so, they say, if an egg breaks from the outside in, it results in death. If it breaks from the inside out, it results in life. And, and as a church, you'll experience pressure, right? You'll experience all these things trying to mount pressure on you. If it's going to break you, it kills you. But when you begin to answer it with what's inside of you, come on, it results in life. And I want to encourage everyone, my goodness, to begin to answer. Answer it, you know. Yeah, speak the word or just answer it. I believe. You know, don't just... We have prayer meetings at our church. And when, when the guys initially started praying, we will pray like this. You know, speak it. Get it out, you know. Voice things. Vocalize things. You know, pray in the Spirit. Get the stuff out of you. Uh, anyway... <laughs> you know, get it out of you. Speak. To, it's, I'm telling you, like, there's something about saying it. There's something about saying it. Like, like uh, for example, if you just take your church atmosphere and, like, we acknowledge it. If you say, I love my church, there's just something about when you've said it, when you begin to acknowledge things. 
I'm, I'm going on a rabbit trail quickly, but a quick rabbit trail. Uh, Philemon, Philemon, <laughs> chapter one. He says, let the communication of your faith, well, it will be made effective by the acknowledging of the good work of every good thing in Christ that's in you. And we've confessed things, but how many often have we acknowledged things? You can confess things or you can acknowledge. You know, Christ is in me. I acknowledge that. <laughs> yeah? And voicing it, vocalizing it. All right, let's go to John 4. Hey, is this okay? All right, John 4. Um, you know the story. We spoke of, okay, so we're speaking about rivers, we're speaking about wells, we're speaking about revival. Um, just for the guys who did give me that vision, uh, we, we, we had visions about my vision. Uh, what happened was in our church, I always thought that it was going to break, but it, I experienced it like a tap opening. So I don't know who said that, but it was like a, yeah, there. I experienced like, like this revival happening and it, like, it comes like gently. Instead of like chaos, it just was like a tap, tap opening. And I believe that's how it's going to, it's not going to just be chaos, you know. It's going to be from, from, from all of us. And uh, all right, let's go. You guys know the story. So let's, let's take it from verse mm, 10. Jesus answered, if you had only known who had recognized God's gift and who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead and he would have given you living water. All right, so the context is obviously Jesus is thirsty. The Bible says he was tired from his journey. Hey, so that's okay to be tired. Jesus was tired as well. It's okay to rest. And um, he sits and he, he asks for a drink. And uh, he said, hey, if you knew who was in front of you, you would have asked for living water. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. How then can you provide living water? Where do you get your living water? Are you greater than and superior to our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, um, who used to drink from it himself, and his sons and his cattle also? And I just want to just pause it there. Sometimes we have a picture of, let's say in the context of what revival looks like, of what church looks like. We talk about heroes of the past, right? Um, and sometimes we occasionally visit those wells. And sometimes what God is trying to do is bring something new. And if we keep on making what was old, like our blueprint for the way forward, we're not going forward. All right? So if I'm just going to keep on digging up Jacob's well, and yeah, I get, I get the book says, you know, I've seen everything that you've done, revive it in our times. But, but what is God saying now? Can you hear God's voice now? Come on, what is he saying now? What does revival look like in our time, in our age, in our generation? Can we be sensitive as a church to realize that God wants to do something new? That maybe he wants to redefine what your idea of church is, what your idea of, of revival is. Amen? So she's just looking back saying, we're going to dig from... We're going to take from, from Jacob's well. He drank. I go, are you greater than him? And uh, he says, if you drink of this water, you'll be thirsty again. Yo, that speaks a lot. Yo. But whoever takes a drink of the water that I will give him shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore, but the water that I will give him 
shall become a spring of water, welling up and flowing within him for eternal life. I love this. I love this. Maybe I must just read on and then explain. Uh, We have this thing where we constantly need to run somewhere to be filled. To be filled. We need to go to church to be filled. Um, what's always interesting is, is whenever the new iPhone comes out, that people will sleep in a queue to get the new iPhone. And they just had the new iPhone like a year ago. But now they're thirsty again. <laughs> right? So Jesus is trying to say, you're going to go back to the, who's those iPhone is? Is there any iPhone is here? Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> but in the context of, of that, he says, no, wait, you know what? I'm going to turn this thing around. And when I saw it, I saw like, you know, sometimes you can take like a, like a, like a broken ball or something, and you can flip it inside out. That's what Jesus did with drinking, that it's not from outside in, it's from inside out. And it, it's interesting to think that the fulfillment that you think you need is going to come from inside out, not from outside in, which means we need to begin to change the way we think. As long as we think we need to go there to get it, Go there to get it. You know, that's what, uh, what's that verse in, in Corinthians where it says, the righteousness which is of faith says the word is near you. It's in your heart. It says you're not going to go up to heaven to bring Christ down, to the abyss to bring Christ up, but what does it say? It's in you. It's got to come out of you. It's got to come out of you. And I experienced, I experienced this... Um, Yo, man, we, we've had incredible leaders. Yeah, Daniel, Gerard, we've had, in, we've had amazing, amazing leaders. I walked into a time where I just felt, who do I look to, Lord? Where do I get it? Where can I, where can I find? And it's like God says, it's in you. It's in you. Man, I'm telling you, if you, if you take this, You'll experience tremendous breakthrough in your life. You, you, can have, you can have revival. And he said, I don't think what he meant was that you'll never thirst again because I thirst again. It just means I don't need to go to so-and-so to get filled again because I have the well in me. <laughs> the well is in me that is, if I drink from the well that is in me, I won't be thirsty. I have access to it all the time. Come on, I have access to it all the time. Uh, it's hard to preach a message without quoting Bill Johnson. He said, <laughs> he said, if, if, if I, I can't say it as well as he said it, but he said something like, you know, something like, if you just keep on watching the news and the social media feeds and you're discouraged, it's self-inflicted. It's your own fault. Okay? It's your own fault. So he turned, he turned it around. He flipped this whole picture inside out. And is it possible right now for you to think that everything that you need is already in you? Come on, everything that you need is in you. It's in you. And that's why I thought somewhere... There has to be a pushback from the church. There has to be a pushback because all this pressure that you're feeling, all this pressure that you're experiencing, all, the, all the, the weight, the anxiety, the depression, what do you think that is? That's out to kill you. But inside of you, there's, there's something that God, well, that's what Isaiah 59 says, the, the, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. So the pressure comes, but the Spirit is there to raise a standard for the breakthrough. Amen? So instead of entertaining answers of why you can't, 
Man, begin to ask uh, questions why you can't. Begin to answer. My goodness, get... I don't know, like, is like praying in tongues out of fashion? <laughs> no. No, it shouldn't. But I'm telling you, you start praying in the Spirit. Yeah, you fool, what are you doing? I'm praying in the Spirit. Something is going to break. And what, what, I, what we felt is... Um, especially everywhere where we, where we minister, is as soon as you do that, um, you know, the, the suspicion, the skepticism arises. We just break through. We just don't stop, you know. And we drink from the well. And we drink. <laughs> Amen. We have to stop making somebody else's experience our life source. You have to have your own encounter with Jesus. You have access to it right now. And so he goes on to the, in the context of that, he speaks to the woman. He says, oh, we go to the, to the mountain. You guys go to the temple. He says, hey, time is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You don't need to go there. You, don't need, you can have it right here, right now. Amen? Yeah, I, I am so, I'm so hungry for that, for, for those, those encounters. Hey, and uh, I, I remember, like, my pastor always used to tell me, I'm not going to tell you about my encounters, otherwise you idolize me. And I think that makes sense, you know, some, Get your own encounter. You know, get your own encounter. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. So he says, let's just read this, this part again. The water, verse 14, the water that I will give him shall become a spring of water, welling up, flowing, bubbling continually within him unto eternal life. Give me this water, you know. Give me this water. Give me this water. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And I, I feel like our mission today as... Uh, as a pastor, and I, I can pick it up all around, is, is to begin to equip the church, is to ready the church to, for that revival, you know, in your home, in your, in your workspace, yeah, in your circle of influence. If we can get the church to believe, <laughs> if the church can believe, you know, like, if we can just change what we think the model looks like. I mean, church is absolutely essential, 100%, coming together, essential. Put up this post the other day. Some of you guys might have seen it, but we have we invite guest preachers from all over. You know, wherever I'll announce at my church, for example, we're going to have a prophet from America come to the church. The church will be full of people. <laughs> full. You got no idea who that guy is. You got no idea what his, what his life looks like. He's a prophet from America. He's a superstar. <laughs> the guys will stand in line for a word from God. But we have a prayer meeting on a Monday night and three people pitch up. That is not a shot at a prophet. There's like church, there's a big 
something wrong there. It shows like, the, like a condition of the church. Because if we really truly understood that we have access to God's presence, if we truly understood and embraced, man, <laughs> it's going to change. It's going to change. And if you think you need a celebrity preacher to change your life, you're never going to experience a breakthrough. The only place you're going to find it is in, is in God's presence, is if we approach the throne room. The purpose of the, of the giftings of the church, the five-fold ministry, prophets, evangelists, I was going to read it now in Ephesians, is to bring the church to maturity. And as long as you depend on a, on a, on, on a middle man, you're never going to mature. Amen. It's my heart. It's my heart. I believe it's a heart. Guys, we, we need, to, we need to, to push for it. And I really believe that this is what revival looks like. Some of you guys are sitting with, with uh, anxiety, depression. Oh, what's that? God, why am I here? Nonsense questions. You need revival. You need revival. Redefine it. It's not just good meetings. Okay? Okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, what time must I finish? Please, please don't say keep going. <laughs> no, no, what I'm trying to say is give me an accurate idea of, of what time. Yeah. <laughs> These guys like you. Okay. All right. I, I respect everyone's time, so I don't want to just um, go over the... the, the but okay, let, let, let me finish. Let me finish in in uh, um, Friday. <laughs> That's great. I like you guys. Look, I mean, we in our case, we like permanent. We here for three days, so like, we don't care, right? We'll do it the whole time, right? Um, all right. I'm just scared. This is like a whole sermon. So, but um, it's okay. Let's 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 just finish it. Let's finish it. Yeah, you want to go? Okay, I'll 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 do my best to to quote it. I'm just puzzling it together. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You didn't, do you know that Paul had questions? Paul had a lot of stuff that he didn't understand. Over and over he writes about it, he was perplexed. If you go look at what perplexed means, it's like, why? You know? Paul said, I don't, you know, these, these guys, they've got it all together. Why are you listening to them? He had the same issue if you write in Corinthians um, with... Uh, with, let's just call them celebrities, that the church, that the church rushed after. But he said, this gospel, if you read 2 Corinthians 3, 4, and 5, somehow shines through my perplexities, my imperfections, my questions, my weaknesses which tells me that I don't need to have it all figured out. Someone said it tonight that, Jane Johnson said it tonight. <laughs> she said 
that it's not my job to absorb, but to reflect. And if we can just keep focused on Christ, we will reflect. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, we know. Skip 11, go to 12. <laughs> if you'll seek me, require me as your vital necessity, I will be found by you. And they say God is not lost, is not lost. But sometimes there's things hidden for you. When will we begin to realize like, that we are, every thirst that we think we have is our acknowledgement that we are empty without Him and that we need to begin to realize, God, I need you. When last have you just cleared your, the clatter from your, your checklist of everything that you need? Every breakthrough that you need, scratch it off and just say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Um, we have a prayer meetings at our church, and I told everyone, tonight, from now on, we're not praying for anyone's big toe or whatever weird thing that you're going to bring in your prayer list. We are going to seek God's face. What if we start there? Redefine what it looks like. If you think you know what church looks like, scratch it all and just seek God's presence. Start there. That's for everyone to, to encounter. Come on, when last... Have you had an encounter with God? Have you been queuing up for prayer? Please do. Get hands laid on you as much as what you can. But when last have you had an encounter with Jesus? When last has that been your cry? Say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I require you as a vital necessity. I'm so hungry for you. Lord, show me what's in your heart. Show me what you want uh, me to do. I need you. I need you. I need you. Okay, so what we want to do is, um, what, we <laughs> what, I want, <laughs> what I want to do is, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I want, you, I want you to break through. I want you to break through tonight. Come on. I don't want, I'm not going to, I'm going to put the mic down. I'm not going to give you a prophetic word. I'm not going to lay hands on you. I want you to break through. Break through. Tonight, I want you to answer your questions. I, wanna, I want you to speak back to the pressure. I want you to respond. And I want you to have an encounter. Come on, man. Sadhu Suna Singh, I think it was, he says, he said, thirst is proof that water exists. And it in itself is the proof that it can be filled. Hunger is the proof that food exists. And it can be fulfilled. When God says, seek my face, that desire to see his face says that it can be filled. And it's only when we become truly hungry and thirsty and we realize at the end of it, I can't give it to you. If I give it to you, you will thirst again. But if you drink from the well that Jesus said is available to you, you will have access and never have to thirst again. 
I will give you a starter. So let's let's stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Sorry, just before. I just need to jump in. I was really praying about tonight, um, and I got this verse, and I read it, and I'm like, no, whoa, that was like way left. You know, that was like far off. It was just too graphic. And I'm a visual thinker, and I'm seeing this picture. And, and the other words are, I want to read this to you. Hosea 13, verse 13. The pains of a woman in childbirth, this was this morning. The pains of a woman in childbirth are coming upon him. That's the church. That's Israel. That's us. But he is an unwise son, for now when it is time to be born, he comes not to the place where children break forth. Bruce, I'm, you're sitting here with this picture of the egg and breaking out. It, it's, it's like the, 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 the religious way was to go back to what was known, exactly what you're saying. And to break forth, we've got to go. I'm going to give the mic back to you. I know. It's just like this picture is just so graphic. We've got to be born in the right place. We've got to break forth in the right place. And it's such a now word. It's such a tonight word. Yeah, it's, it's, God says, I will love them freely. I will be like the dew in the night. He will grow and blossom like the lily and cast forth his roots. His suckers and his shoots shall spread and his beauty will be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the cedars of Lebanon. They that dwell under his shade, shall, they shall revive like the grain and blossom like the vine. I'm going to give it back to Bruce. I just had to jump in. It's amazing. So you, you guys must just be ready with whatever you're going to do or sing or whatever. Okay. So so we're going to break through. We're going to answer. We're going to speak back. We're going to push back. Come on, everything that is holding you down. Now, I'm also speaking about religion. I'm speaking about traditional mindsets. I'm, I'm speaking about that thing that says, be quiet. Shush. Don't say anything. I want, we're going to start and we're just going to respond. And I want you to see literally how that current begins to flow. And how you begin to actually cause rivers to burst forth from the inside of you. So I'm going to start praying. And then you pray with me. Zandro dos albragesha la macro de sagregesha. Zin la mando no mo sahagro go shamra ma sudre des. La hrede ala ma la he draga suradasha agro go se bramandro gosa. Zin la da sudra ma subragesha bramandra gesa han la gasha. Jun rama kurumosa drede hendra gesha brama sulomo kregeshe. Zandro gosha braba sacre gesse le mechra handro goste. Nenda la masi alaba shubra geshe. Lord Jesus, we are hungry for you. Lord Jesus, we are desperate for you. Lord, we need you. We need you, Jesus. You, you are our desire, Lord. You are our desire tonight, Lord Jesus. Zahun Rama Krugosha. Come on, just begin to just declare how empty you are without Him, how you need Him, how hungry you are. Lord Jesus, we need you. Will you come again? Will you come and refresh us? Will you come and restore us right now? Renew. Come on, church. Bold pray. Bold pray. Zahruge Saha. Keep going, keep going till that breakthrough is there. Keep going, don't stop. Put faith in it. Not from the head, from the heart. Come on, from the spirit, man. Don't reason, don't reason in your mind. Surrender your understanding. Surrender your understanding. Surrender your questions. Put them down right now. Put down the whys. Put down the winds.
put down the house. Believe. Your are our source, Jesus. Come on, we prophesy revival. I prophesy revival in your personal life. Come on, a breakthrough tonight. Tonight you're going to walk out free because you encountered Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. A new well, new well, <laughs> the new well. <laughs> Woo. Doesn't need to look like what it looked like yesterday. This is not yesterday's church. <laughs> Woo. Oh, Jesus. It's a new day. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's a new day. Come on, it's new. It's new. Woo! Come on, you're new right now. You're brand new right now. Oh God. Revive us, Jesus. Revive us, Jesus. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, Jesus. Revive us, Lord. Woo! Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Come on, there's purpose. Today there's purpose. There's reason. There's reason. Shit. Gilamakrodosah. <laughs> 